Alright, time for a Volley Bear Beginner's Guide. This is gonna be a lower rated game, just like a silver ish rated game. I'm gonna show you ways to play Volley Bear in this ELO bracket to get yourself a consistent lead and to help you very much carry with this champion. Uh, he is very good at carrying games. He has really good gang pressure, clear speed. He has really good scaling as well. If you do build him some part of a hybrid form. If you're not too comfortable with the hybrid form or you're just starting to learn fully, you also have the option of just simply... Wait a second. He's just going to ward like right here, I would assume. So I'm just going to quickly... I should be fine. No ward here on base. Alright, so yeah, Volley, like if you're not too comfortable on Volley and you're just starting to learn him, you can go like the Sunderer Mythic into Starax tanky items. But the more effective way to actually carry, or what I would recommend to at least, is to um, go for the Sunder into a hybrid form build. Because it just does more. Am I just... They could still walk up here. So yeah, I'm just gonna start blue here because my kill's most likely gonna get pushed in in the early game, and I try to, I want to try to give her like an out, I guess, out of her laning phase, something that she can like, um, kind of get going from. Because as soon as kill gets going a little bit, we should be in a pretty good spot. But that early game, I just want to make sure that I clear towards her to help her out for that specific situation. I'm doing it in the bush here because I'm pretty sure this isn't warded, and this is actually quite helpful for me specifically. All right, let's just use the E on the romp there to leash it in i do it in the bush there so they don't see i'm doing it if they have like a ward right here or anything of the sort so it's a little bit safer i'm just gonna smite this right there walk to the next camp you don't want to make yeah you don't have to like worry about your e when it comes to um, getting a shield off of it if you're not gonna make it to the next camp not gonna get a shield out of it that's not a big deal as long as you just use it to leash the camp preemptively because you want to get that on cooldown as soon as you can to just have the best clear speech you can because you don't need any health uh, help anyway so it's better to just use it from a distance like right now this leash is in this also makes me hold my passive a lot easier as you can see i'm still mech like i'm still on the five passive stacks if you don't drop this your clear is going to be faster regardless so this is the way that i would recommend you to do it every time between camp next camp you use your thingy on it your e on it Hotline uh, just double died, unfortunately. But this will just save you time when leashing in the camp towards the next stage. And I can just hold my passive up the entire time. As you can see right now, my clear speed is on a pretty good tempo. Right here again. I did my red a little wrong there, but it's okay. I lost a couple of seconds on that because I didn't want to necessarily smite red buff. If you do it a little bit better, I should have done one more auto attack when I when it came to leashing my uh, Krugs here, which was a slight miscalculation on my part. Alright, I'll still hold the smite. Max Q first. The reason you're doing this is because you're going Sunderer, by the way. If you're going Sunderer, having the extra move speed just, just to catch up is a lot better. I'm actually just going to gank. He just uses E. We can just walk up here. There we go. Just walk up. Keep walking with him. It's very important here. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, she wants me to help her push. That's fine. I should get in the turret. Alright, that's good. Now, I'm most likely lost scuttle for the gank. That's what I would assume, at least. But I'll just opt to try to opt for bot scuttle instead. Bot scuttle is still there. That's good. Got the shield flash over the wall. There's a good weight from the Diana there. My bot lane is mid here, mid here though, so... Should be pretty comfortable to just... Oh, she flashed it. That's unfortunate for me. I was barely, barely not in range, but I can walk up the scuttle here, smite it to get all my HP back off of it, basically, and I should be okay. Wait a little bit for it to proc, stun it, so it doesn't move anywhere from this place. Let me just quickly clear this. And then I'm just do, gonna do my Gromp and my uh, Wolves again to have those on cooldown before I back. Because I don't want my entire jungle to be up when I'm actually backing. That is not that great. I may actually opt for the bolt wave here. Yes, I will. Walk down. Uh, 
I just want to make sure that I get this farm. Nothing else. So the XP doesn't necessarily go to waste here. And I currently have quite a lot of gold. So I'm just going to take the back instead of walking all the way to my wolves. Now I'm just going to rotate or instantly back rotate towards my crux. Maybe gank the top lane again and play like that. Now on volley, whether you're going tank or not, it is recommended to just start the same way with your build. So you can go CDR boots with Dark Seal. Dark Seal is amazing on volley because his AP scalings are pretty nice. And uh, this gives you a lot of AP for just a 350 gold item. If you can stack it up to 10, it gives you 65 ability power, which is a super high value because uh, the large world costs you 1250. And it only gives you 60 ability power. So that's like a 900 gold advantage right there. So whether you're going to finish it or not, doesn't matter. I would still recommend you to pick it up. Bully is rather tanky. He's pretty good at like dueling and stuff. So it's not that difficult generally to keep your stacks up. It appears that my bot lane is having some trouble. It appears that my kill is doing pretty well though, so I think I could just clear down towards bot lane, look for like a potential dragon opportunity, and uh, play like that. Keep using my E to leash from li a little bit of a distance, just have to pre prep to go. I'm actually gonna hold my smite here in case the dragon becomes a thing in a like soon-ish type of manner. I'll hit six off wolves, which is going to be really massive here because it's going to allow me to easily force a dragon down. I'm going to hold my smite for as long as possible here. And I'm just going to finish wolves, do blue. My grump will respawn somewhat soon, but I will definitely try to look for a dragon opportunity if I can. Okay. I think I should hit the plant towards the dragon right now to check if she's doing it. They have it warded and just recently as well. I'll smite now because it's uh, going to be up soon again. I can just chill and do my uh, my gromp right now. It's going to respawn off of the full clear that I did downwards. And I might be able to plant gank bot lane here in a second. Which is what I'm going to look for. I'm going to smite this as soon as I can right now. I want to have my blue smite ready for the next thing as well. He's going to go for the blitz crank. He's probably the easiest target there. Just leap in with ult. Have the pressure for it. We could look for the dragon here. See if I can catch up to her. Barely not the case. That is super unfortunate. But you saw, like, the points in Q are gonna matter there quite a bit. I will not have Smite for this, though, because I used it on the Gromp. But I think it should be fine. I don't think they can contest because I just killed their bot lane. Uh, they have to get, I'm gonna have to be careful about this, Diana. I have no Smite, so... I'm just gonna try to burst it down like that. You can use your E to try to burst it because it's uh, HP-based damage. So right there, I just wait for my E charge and then tr try to QW it at the same time. She knows I saw her. There's no way I should just run towards top scuttle here. No, Vlad doesn't die to this. There's actually no way he dies to this. So I'm just going to charge at top scuttle. He died to it. All right, then. That is rather surprising. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting Vladpool to just be fine. So that's my my bad, I guess, for not assisting him in that manner. Um, there's a good chance she may be invading me on my like, red buff right now. Decent chance. I don't know if I can even fight that, because technically if the Lucian just reacts, I lose that fight. She's not doing it, that's beautiful. Okay, whatever. A small one. I don't... One small one is whatever. I'm just gonna clear my camps here quickly, because they're up, and I don't... I, I, I want to clear them. I want to make sure that I keep that jungle tempo going, because I have an experience lead on it right now. If I can sustain that throughout this game, I'm already gonna do really well. Mm, kill's gonna be fine there. No worries. I have a lot of gold, so I definitely want to look towards basing soon. She might look for the Rift Herald here. Would she, though? Alright, so after Q, you want to max W second. I'm going to ch quickly check the Herald with this plant. She is not doing it, in fact. They were maybe moving for it there, but I'm like, I have a lot of gold right now, so I'm just going to base. 
Get my Thunderer going. Get the Phage. Get the Sheen. I don't need the potion anymore, so I could just sell it. I have no sustain issues at all, so there's no problem. Uh, it appears that my Vladimir is struggling quite a bit, actually. He's 40 CS behind, approximately. Gonna run bot lane. Rakan ults not up, but he has, does have flash. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna walk past my camps for now, because I think this is just gonna be fine. Just need you to go in, Rakan. I'm gonna kill Blitzcrank first, I think. I can't really do that now. Blitz is most likely dead already, so... That's fine. I gotta shut down off the Samira. You see, I'm basically gold mode. Like, they couldn't do much to me there. Blitzcrank, I barely wasn't able to kill him there. It was really close, but... I also couldn't really, like, walk up to the Blitzcrank because the Samira was worth more gold, so it's actually better for me to just focus the Samira down, and the Blitzcrank was most likely gonna die in that scenario anyway. So it's better to just prioritize the target that has the most escape potential and then kill that guy first. Especially if, if the target is worth more gold like the Samira was in the situation because she was worth a shutdown. So yeah. Okay, Sunder is going to be 1500 which means I just have to clear my camps. A couple of them at least. As soon as I hit that item I'm going to have a big spike. It's going to be good. But again, there the Q is just giving me the move speed. It's allowing me to get in range to gank, which is why you want to max your Q for first, because you don't have any trouble with damage, as you just saw as well. I quite easily obliterated them there. Like, it wasn't that much of a problem. Okay, that was a good Herald play. I was bot side, so I couldn't really do much about it. Blue's gonna spawn. I can just re-gank bot lane here, potentially. I'm not sure if the river is gonna be warded or not at the moment, but I can check with my sweeping trinket. I don't want to use my smite here because I'd rather have the blue smite to actually gank with. So I'm just going to quickly chill on this camp and not smite it. I do have a Sunderer in base right now, but if this isn't warded... Rakan walked back. That is extremely unfortunate. He probably didn't see me on the minimap. If he would have walked up when the Blitzcrank was about to ward, it would have been a free gank. I'm just going to try to go for mid here. Uh, if this bush isn't warded, like the pixel specifically, I can hug the wall there to bypass any wards in here and see if the Lucian's like disrespectful recalling. He's not. Alright then. Guess I'm just gonna opt for my Raptors real quick, then back for my Sunderer and look for Dragon. I'm gonna smite here because I have two charges. Would she use Herald on mid lane is the question. Because if that's the... Oh wait, mid lane's already down. What am I talking about? I didn't even realize mid turret was dead there, to be honest. I have to back right now get my Sunderer. It's not worth fighting that, not with the amount of gold I had there. If he wins that, that's great. If he loses that, that's really unfortunate. But on my gold value there, it's really bad. He got him. That's good. Oh boy, okay. I'm gonna, just gonna start using Q. To get more move speed towards the situation. And if I can get both plants there. I should there be there in about the right time. Rakan, please, please, please. Ra My, I'm just going to go for it. Whatever. He's dead. I do a lot of damage. I'm just going to chase this guy down. He's also dead. Rakan, ideally would have liked to see him move for, the, uh, for me there. To help me out chase him down with move speed and he's also dead you're just a raid boss man like if the Rakan would have moved with me here and actually went over the wall with me at the same time which is what i was hoping he would do that would have been a little bit cleaner but overall this is fine because i'm just too strong like divine Sunderer is really really strong it allows you to carry very very easily and next again there the q max is showing just how good it is because i'm having that move speed to catch up with people so easily smite this this is not warded so i can hug the wall here so any ward there would be useless so i can walk up to lucian right now my boy come over here uh, it appears that my uh, vladimir is just not paying attention to me whatsoever and he would prefer the wave that is fine i think if he just walked with me like add him there he would have probably died but it's okay i'm just not gonna overcommit there because it's not gonna be worth without my ult I currently have two Dragon Control, which is good. She did get the Rift Herald overall, but it's not a big issue. 
She hasn't really effectively used it yet. Keep using your Q and E between camps at this stage now, just to keep your mobility up as high as possible. Okay. Hi, that's unfortunate timing. Um, I would like to see my Rakan move from mid here. I probably killed Lucian by myself, to be honest. I don't have to ult for this. I flashed for it in this case. Like, it was either flash or ult there. My ult was still on a slight cooldown, so just flashing over was gonna be faster. Kill that. I have a lot of gold, and I also have 10 Magi stacks, or not Magi's, Dark Seal stacks, so I can quite easily opt for the Magi's here if I want to. This is a choice you can make. Uh, I guess to keep it more beginner friendly, I won't do the Magi's here, and I'll just hold on to the 10 stack Dark Seal, and I'll just build into the next item. It appears that my team is losing their mind. There we go. So next up, we want to look at their team. They have mostly physical damage, so Zonia's here would hold quite a good value. The uh, potential but since i'm quite ahead i can opt to go for nashers instead and nashers is just going to give me the extra fight potential all right ezreal gets the kill i don't mind that ah uh, damn okay that lucian showing up right there was rather unfortunate timing rakan also still had ult and exhaust so i was kind of expecting him to go in but he didn't um, I should have just ulted right on the turret there. I could have disabled the turret, but I was really scared that Murakan wasn't going to follow that up. So I actually hesitated there, which ended up being a slight mistake. I'm just going to go for Nashers here because I am in a good spot. I'll skip the Magis. Normally I'd buy the Magis here, but I understand that like people that are starting out are a little bit more uncomfortable with Magis. So I won't do it right here. And just holding on to the Dark Seal is already going to be more than enough. No, that's a quite a late TP there. I'm just going to move towards Bolt here. Oh no. Oh boy. He still has ult and exhaust. He needs to use them. He didn't use them there. He's dead. I'm going to chase this down. I don't even care. It's gonna, he's dead here. Yep, good. And I can probably catch him as well, potentially. No, I won't be able to catch him there. It's okay. If Rakan would have used his ult or his exhaust in that situation, I'm pretty sure he could have lived. But, uh, yeah. How much I can do about that. Look at that move speed. Look at how good Max and Q is, man. Like, it's so, so strong. Allows you to get so many free kills. We take this camp. Wait for somebody to come back here, potentially. I have ult right now, so they can't really fight me. I'm pinging my Rakan to check red. Oh, I'm going for Samira. We're ulting turret, so it gets disabled. This, do this doesn't allow the turret to auto-attack there, so if you just ult turret like that, you can easily deny the uh, enemy from doing anything there. Samira had no chance because she just walked back. She gets uh, like uh, turrets get ulted, uh, turret get disabled, turret can't hit. An easy mode. Gonna back right now, get my Nashers, get my extra damage, and then we're gonna start building more defensive. So my next item in this case will be Zonias. Uh, you can here as well, instead of building. Uh, wait, just give me one sec to find. There it is. Good. If you aren't comfortable with like a more carry heavy build, again, if you're starting out, then the build would be Sunderer, Starax, you can go Thornmill, Abyssal Mask, you can do that type of stuff as well. As long as you're just getting Sunderer. Apart from that, like a hybrid build is what I would recommend because it just carries a game much, much easier. You have way more damage output, you're able to carry games much easier, and you're still fully. You're still going to be quite tanky and people are still going to heavily underestimate you, especially in lower brackets. Like the damage volley does is very unexpected, uh, generally speaking at least. Oh, yeah. Just gotta wait for them to come up here. My boy, you're dead. Good night. That's another kill. Oh, he just he just he just killed himself by wasting his W like that. There we go. Not bad. Gold mode. 
Nash just allows me to have massive, massive DPS. I have really, really good sustain as well at the same time because of my Ws. I have a good amount of abilities. As you can see, I have 800, uh, sorry, 60 abilities, not 800. 800 would be insane. So I just have that pressure. Like, it's really, really good. Like, you can see Nash is starting to kick in on some damage as well. And yeah, if you had Magis here, or if I picked Magis here, that would have been even better for, like, just AP potential. I would be doing a lot more damage. But uh, yeah, as you can see right now, Divine Thunder is doing a lot. So, as you can see, the Ezreal and the Rakan are super surprised as well by Volley's damage output. And that's just this build for you. Like, this build will carry you. This build will win you games. I would highly recommend you to play and get used to this build specifically. Oh, you're dead. Thank you. You, you see, I'm just a raid boss anyway. I don't have to build tank. As long as you use the build right, you don't have to build tank or anything. You'll be fine. And that's why I would recommend you to get used to this style instead of a tanky volley style. But starting out learning volley's kit, which isn't terribly difficult. Starting out with a couple of tank games isn't bad. All right, I'm just going to get red here. We have currently 25 kills. I have 19 kill participation on that. Currently, I'm just going to buy my Zonias right here. And then I'll go for the Abyssal Mask. Generally, as an armor item, Zonias is good. And then as your AP item, like your magic resist item, you want to try to get the Abyssal Mask. The reason for that is um, if you immobilize a champion with Abyssal Mask, it gives you 15% damage increase. So you can Q somebody and uh, you'll basically instantly have a 15% damage increase towards that target. So you're just going to one-shot them. So for like any type of AP damage, which in this case Diana and Blitz do some good amount of AP damage. Mo mostly Diana, of course, but Blitz does some. Uh, Abyssal Mask is going to be good, but it's also a good damage increase at the same time. I can, of course, later on here, sell my Dark Seal for like another item instead. Uh, if I have the 25 stack Magis, however, you rarely ever want to sell that. It's more recommended to just hold your items at that point. I'm going to just charge at this guy. As you can see, I just instantly one shot him. I'm going to charge at this Blitzcrank now. Up over him. I have Zonia, so I'm not that worried. I'm just going to charge at them. And I just kill her. And I just drop turret aggro. And we run out. Beautiful. You can see the strength of this build. It's super, super strong. I, it's such, such free low as well, man. Like, if you get used to playing with this build a little bit, just get used to the ganks a little bit, which are super straightforward. You just press Q, you run at them, and that's all you have to really necessarily do for your gank to work. You can carry with this build so well. I would recommend you to learn volleys clear. Uh, make sure to use your E's ahead of time on your camps as well, which is important. Don't try to get the shield off of it because it's unnecessary. It's very, very unnecessary. And try to have dragon control because volley is pretty good at that. But yeah, just at distances, use your E. Because then the charge prep time will be good enough. There we go, and Abyssal Mask is going to be 1800 gold, so I'll be back for that soon. I'm going to do a couple of the enemy's jungler's camp so I can deny him some income. And I'm also 16 soon, which is good. There we go, level 16. I can get my Abyssal Mask now, which is basically going to make me unkillable at this point. And then, yeah, last item here, I can sell my Dark Seal. I could have upgraded to a Magius, I would have had 25 stacks on it. But I just avoided that for this game specifically, that would give you a good amount of extra AP. Uh, however, you're still on Dark Seal. If it has less stacks, even you can always just opt for like a lost item to go for a bunch of different things. Honestly, you can do Cosmic Drive, which is generally the one I tend to go for because it gives some nice HP. Like it gives 200 health. As you can see, this item gives you 200 HP, 80 AP, and 20 ability haste. The combination of that HP with the st like resistances you got here is very, very nice to survive. And then also like the uh, I'm just gonna go in. I don't even care. Alright, I'm tanking some damage. It doesn't matter. Just run at them again. He's gonna probably die to that. Yes, he is. Beautiful. Oh, you're dead. Good night. I'm out gonna outrun him because of my... Uh, oh, never mind. He flashed. Well, that's one thing I guess he can do. Yeah. Q, Q max is just showing. Gives a, such a big move speed increase. 
Also, if you get CC'd whilst you're running at somebody with Q, it gets instantly auto with uh, the cooldown gets instantly refreshed as well. So right there, you can always just use it to run it with it. All right, here we go. Do the dragon. This is going to give me Drake Soul. I probably shouldn't have smited that. Holding smite is going to be more worth it to help me chase people down. Look at my burst, by the way. Like, I'm pretty much just one-shotting blue here. And let's just go for the uh, mid turret now. Using my Q on cooldown, it's a 5.88 second cooldown. I will sell the Dark Seal when I get to my Cosmic Drive here. The extra mobility you get from this is really nice. The extra ability haste is even better. Like ability haste is just like one of those stats on Volley Bear that is just completely insane. Am I gonna die just straight away? Oh, I didn't press Zonias in time. I actually wanna try to bait. Oh, oh my God, that's my bad. I heavily misplayed that. I got there interrupted multiple times there, which was really well played from the enemy team. But I also didn't Zonias my anything. I pressed my E too late. I think I got interrupted the exact second I pressed my E on my keyboard there. Maybe I got like Blitz ult silenced or something. Something happened at least to where I used my E, but it didn't go off and I had to use it again. Because I used it right the second I was trying to go in on the target here, but it just didn't go off. And then I had to use it again, which then created it or resulted in it being late. So that's my bad. I misplayed that. I'm like, I kind of just got interrupt timed there. The enemy team really, really locked me down on that one. I think the set CC locked me really well, and the Blitzcrank silence knock up everything. It just became a problem. But yeah, I didn't use my Zonias either. So, I mean, what can I say? It is a mistake. I didn't like. I got the ult late. I got interrupted. I got engaged on. It happens. I think the enemy team may be able to defend here. I won't be able to get there regardless in time, so I could just might as well just do the red right now. Either my team wins right this second or like the enemy team. Nah, my team's gonna win here. But yeah, apart from the last team fight, you can see how like me misplaying that, of course. I would have probably won that if I played that better. But you can see how strong Volley Bear is. Like it is absolute gold mode. No, I'm just gonna go for mid lane. I don't really care. I'm literally gonna go for the end kill. Just charge this guy, make sure this guy dies because he's my main problem right now. Ah, he died. I wasted my flesh. I honestly am just going to hit the Nexus. I don't even care. There we go. GG's. Alright, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. Uh, if you want to see more videos from me in the future, hit the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Also, I highly recommend playing Volley Bear. Do it. Free low, free low. Goodbye.